you might as well just call this show Lats and Traps. Because we are back. We are back. We're back. Hello, I said we're back. Hey, what's going on out there? No, I said when I say we're back, that's the cue to play the song. No, I'm not going to do it again. I already did it once. Just, just play the song. It's too late. Just hit this. Just play the song. Okay? No, I, don't cry. Listen, it's okay. It's it's fine. It's fine. Just play the song. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it later. Just hit play. Golly. <laughs> And gentlemen, welcome back to Fall Circus. My name is Tristan Sartoris, and I hope you enjoyed that little that little skit there. Okay, I just kind of thought of that on the fly. I, listen, don't worry, I'm not being mean to anybody. There's nobody. There's nobody out there. Hey, right? You want to say hi? You can't because no one's there. So don't worry, I'm not actually being a jerk. I'm just pretending, which may or may not be better than actually being a jerk, like acting. You know. Like trying to put on a face and be like, hey, yeah, dude, I'm a jerk, man. I'm a jerk, but I'm actually a sweet little nice boy, okay? But anyways, it's good to be here with you guys today. Um, If you can't tell, I, uh, I'm i feeling great, okay? I'm feeling great. Dude, I might as well be a mascot for Frosty Flakes because that's how great I'm feeling. And uh, yeah, it just feels it feels really good to be back here with you. Um... You know, if you guys didn't see the last episode, right, I had a little dance with the devil, right? I had a little bit of a sickness, a little bit of stuff going around, and I was worried about the last episode. I was like, man, I'm just going to try and force it, right? I don't know if I'm going to have the energy to get through this. And I watched it back, and it was a little bit better than I thought I'd do, you know? I thought I was kind of really, I was going to stumble, and it wasn't going to be, you know, live up to the potential of what this show's meant to be. But it was uh, it was okay, you know? I was much more flamboyant that I could have brought out, and I was I was a little bit proud of myself, so I'll take that. But anyways, I'm feeling good today. So we're going to get some natural, some freaking off the cuff, some traditional trademark Tristan, you know, uh, stumbling prowess, right? Because that's like, what I'm good at, dude. I gotta, I'm, an, I'm an expert. I have a certain expertise. I got a certain skill at saying random things, and I really don't know where the sentence is going to go. Like, when I open my mouth, my, whoops. Holy crap, dude. Like, what uppercut from down under right here. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know where my brain's going to go. When I say something, I'm just like, I open my mouth, and I'm like, where my brain's just like trying to catch up to the words. Like, wait, hold on, man. Hold on. This is me. I'm like, yeah. So anyways, at the start, I'm like, wait, I can't even think that fast, and I can't, I never catches up. So I never know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to say next. I just kind of let my mouth trail. So it's, there's not a lot of thinking involved in this show. It's more so just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the show is. Again, like, I just don't, I don't know what I'm going to say. But anyways, I'm feeling great. And, um, I got healthy. I got healthy in time for the wedding, the wedding I was talking about, whatever day that was. And, and I know it probably wasn't smart to upload that thing right before the wedding of me being sick. People were like shaking my hand, like, wait, is everything okay? Wait, like they saw the episode as the, as the wedding was going on. Like, wait, I didn't know you were sick. What's, well, you just, hey, nice to meet you, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't. I was okay, dude. I was okay. I was feeling great. And uh, don't worry about it, all right? I'm Mr. Clean now, okay? I'm Mr. Clean. I couldn't be more clean if you shaved my head and gave me a mop, okay? That's how clean I am. Um... But, but, well, at least I was going into the wedding, right? I was, I was freaking healthy going into that wedding. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling great. Everything worked out. Things work out for me, dude. Things work out for me. And it was, uh, and let me just talk about the wedding real quick because the wedding kind of, you know, reactivated a little bit of my sickness, right? And I was not too thrilled about that. Um, so the wedding, wedding was nice. It was an outdoor wedding, right? It was an outdoor wedding wedding. Now, if you've been in Ohio weather in, you know, late October, you know that it's not, it's not, you know, weather that you want to be out in for hours and hours and hours. 
at a time. And that's kind of what I did as I just got over a cold and I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's going to be fine. And I'm, I'm out there for like 12 hours in the freaking freezing wind, right? Things are just blowing around and I'm, and things are about to act right back up. So I woke up that next morning and I got kicked in the face again, dude. I got kicked in the face. I hate being sick. So I was sick again for another like three or four days or whatever. I don't know what the time period is. It doesn't matter. But I was sick again, or at least, you know, it wasn't as bad as the first time, but I had it again. It's like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. I hate being sick. I hate it more than anything, right? <laughs> okay, are we back? Is everything okay? This is like the second week in a row. We're having technical difficulties. Great. Perfect. No, it's fine. It's fine. Dude, I'm in a good mood. I don't really mind. It's okay. I'm feeling great, like I said. Um, but as far as being sick, dude, I hate it. I hate it more than anything in the world. I don't know where this cut off is, so I'm just going to reiterate, you know, my, uh, my stance on the matter. Uh, I hate it more than anything in the world. I would rather anything else happen to me than get sick, right? I don't want a cold. And you might thinking, dude, you're over-exaggerating. It's a little, it's just a little, you get a little runny nose, you sneeze, you cough, it's whatever. No, dude, I'm not over-exaggerating. I'm not even just exaggerating. If anything, I'm under-exaggerating, dude. You want to hear over-exaggerating or just regular exaggerating? I would say, hey, I would rather be kicked in the sternum with steel toe boots than get sick. And you're like, dude, that's over-exaggerating. I'm like, no, that's still under-exaggerating. I'd rather be punched in the nuts with someone wearing brass knuckles and I'm still under exaggerating. I'd rather be thrown out of a plane with nothing but a grand piano strapped to my back and I'm actually that's probably over exaggerating but my point still stands dude. I hate it more than anything and uh, I would I just it's it's horrible. It's horrible right. It's just like you get kicked in the emotional nutsack dude. It's you're just drained completely everything. I just got nothing left. I got nothing left. <clears throat> So anyways, I am, I'm feeling better though. And, uh, and I'm happy to do that. And golly, dude, it's hot. It's hot right now. And I don't know if this is because of this little thing. Like I'm, put, I'm, I'm putting where? I'm wearing layers. And I don't know why I'm doing that because I usually get pretty hot in here in the first place. But we, you live and you learn. Um, but anyways, the wedding was nice. Let me just try and calm down. I got to cool down. Maybe I think that's why I get so high. It's because I get fired up, literally. And I just, you know, I move around. I'm pretty, you know, hey. So I gotta, I gotta dial it in, you know. But let's go back to the wedding. Let's talk about the wedding. Let me slow down for a minute. Let me, you know, catch myself. Um, <laughs> sorry, my little outburst about sickness, but it's okay. Um, what was I talking about? Doesn't matter. Uh, wedding. Okay. See, now it does matter as long as I remember where I was going. It's okay. Uh, yeah, the wedding was nice. The wedding was okay. It was, I mean, it was, it was more than okay. I don't, hey, dude, your wedding was decent. It was average at best. Um, but everything outside the, you know, the outdoor aspect, it was, uh, it was really nice. It was, it was beautiful, dude. I mean, I think, I don't know. Like I said, I was freezing and, and I was a groomsman. I was a groomsman. And I don't know if I've ever been a groomsman before. I've been to a lot of weddings and, and if I have been, I just don't remember it. Um, that's on you. Okay, if I don't remember it, then, it, you know, it must not have been that spectacular. But I don't think I've been a groomsman before. This was my first time, uh, as far as I know, because this was a unique feeling, dude. It was a unique feeling, um, trying to be in the wedding, but not be a big part of the wedding, right? You know, like, the groomsman, basically, that means I'm just the second best man, okay? And I'm not bitter. Um, but anyways, you know, being in the wedding, it was it was a unique and... Uh, challenge. It was a interesting little hurdle for me to to be a big part of something, right? Like people, like you walk down the aisle and you're coming down like, hey, dude, I'm the groomsman. And uh, it was weird for me to try and not, you know, overtake the situation, right? Like as we've established, I'm chocolate, dude. I'm the chocolate fra- the flavor, dude. I'm the freaking, look at me, look at me. I'm desperate for attention. That's just who I am. That's how I grew up as. And I'm unashamed to admit that. That's just who I am. But it was not my wedding. It was not my place to do that. So it was really hard for me to freaking walk down there. I was like, hey, don't make jokes. Don't anything. Just just do your part. Just do all you're supposed to do. Color inside the lines for once. And I was like, Ooh. and then I just I was like, it's so stiff, dude. I was like, oh my gosh, just don't 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 do anything. Don't say anything. This isn't about you, man. And I and I held it back. And I'm proud of myself for doing that. But it was so hard to not freaking stand and go. Hey, everybody, and play some music and just freaking, you know, playing. Yo, what's up, everybody? Hey, hey, you know the funny thing about peanuts? And I'm freaking bust now, one-liners or whatever. What you know? I don't know what I do, but I was gonna 
you know, not do it. And that was important for me. And I'm, you know, I did it. I did it. And I accomplished that, that feat. Um, as far as the wedding went, it was, uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I think, you know, it was cold. It was cold. I was standing there right there in the freaking groomsmen lines. Like, I was trying to not just overtake the sound of their their vows and their I do's by the sound of my teeth chatting, shaking, and uh yeah, and I kind of tuned out for a little bit in the middle of the wedding. I was like, oh man, it's cold. Oh shoot, yeah, there's something big going on. I, it, I'm so cold, dude. I'm cold. I can't help it. And I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, fo- focus, focus, focus. This is really, really beautiful. Now the thing about being a groomsman, though is that you don't really have a good seat, right? You don't really have a good a vantage point of what's going on. And and I'm pretty sure the wedding was beautiful, but again, I didn't get to see a lot of it. You know, I'm just staring at the back of the best man's neck, okay? I caught the audiobook version of this wedding, and it's like, yeah, I was like, wow, dude, they sound like they're having a good time over there. You know, I can't see it, but it's kind of making making me tear up a little bit. But, um, yeah, it was really nice. It, it was It was cool. It was beautiful. It was nice to be a part of that. Um, there was, <laughs> there was one, there was a funny part too, because as, as the groomsmen, right, they pull out the photographer and they're like, hey, we got to take all these shots, all the groomsmen in the, in the, in the groom and you know, everybody and they're like, so what's, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little fun little thing, right? Like the cheerleaders do. We're going to, everybody lock arms and have Carlton, the groom, right? Lay over our arms and we're going to toss him into the air. He's like, whoa. And like, he's just going to go up and they're going to try and get a little shot, you know, get a cool, get a cool photo. Now we're all looking at each other like, wait, what? Okay, we didn't we didn't practice this. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing here. So we all lock arms, right? Carlton lays over our body, and we're like, okay, I don't, like, how are we gonna throw a grown man into the air? Like we like if you've never done this before, you're thinking, hey, this guy, he's not really just gonna float in the air. Like the wind's gonna take him. Whoa, he, he, there he goes. Um, we're laying. I was like, okay, this is gonna be a little weird. So, he lays over our arms. He's like, okay, on three, everybody go up. And we're like, all right, well, everybody, we gotta try hard because you know I don't know if you've ever tried to throw a grown man into the air, but it doesn't sound like it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world. So we lock arms. We're like, okay, three, two, one. And when I tell you, this guy flew in the air like 12 feet. I'm not. I'm under exaggerating, dude. This guy freaking went up. Like I saw Carlton, he like we launched it, and immediately his body was going way higher than I had anticipated. And I was like, holy crap, there he goes. Like he was ascending to heaven. Like he had just accomplished everything he had to do on this earth. They're like, there he goes. And you look up and you see, like you said, like the whites of his eyes, he's afraid. Dude, there was nothing but white. He's like, oh my gosh. And we're like, holy crap. And all of us had we didn't know what was gonna happen, so we throw him up. And we're just like this. Everyone puts their hands on their face like, holy crap. I don't think people are supposed to be up that high. And we watch him fall all the way down to the ground as he face plants into the grass. We're like, oh, oh my God. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Um, it was uh, it was horrible. And luckily, he walked away kind of unscathed. I don't know if he took a tumbling class before this, but he knew how to fall, apparently, from that height. It was, it was, it was crazy, dude. And... So if you're having a wedding, if you're going to go be a groomsman or you're going to go try and, you know, do some crazy acrobats or something, practice before you do it. Because we're just like, give it, everybody, give it all you got. Give it everything you got. Oh, my. Um, We broke him. We broke him. Freaking, he's been married for five minutes, literally. And, uh, and they weren't too pleased. But, you know, it happens. It's a fluke accident, but it's, it's okay, I suppose. Right. Um, but anyways, the, the wedding was nice. It was cool. It was great. And, you know, whatever else there is to say about weddings. Um, what else is going on, dude? Uh, the, do the Browns, the Browns play tonight. Browns play tonight, dude. Uh, I'm excited and hurt, you know? Yeah. I don't know what else to say about that, man. The Browns have been having, uh, a hard time. Okay. Like, we, we lost against the Chargers just by a couple points. Lost, we got ran over by the Cardinals. Everybody's just hurt, dude. Think, like, we have a super talented roster. You know, one of the best of the best. Like, I feel like we could compete with anybody. But we are getting beat up, man. And, like, when I, I made a joke earlier, like, weeks earlier, back when the season first started about the Ravens. And, like, oh, the ghost is freaking lingering around the stadium, beating people with sticks. The medical staff is like, raw. Oh. <laughs> no, he's an Australian. Rule it. No, you're going to take this, and you're right, and he's just hurting him, whatever. 
I don't know what's going on with the Browns. We have over 20 injured players, okay? Now, keep in mind, you can only have 53 people on a team. That's just about half of them, okay? Uh, we're screwed. We're screwed. and <laughs> It looks like it's only getting worse. Um, and Baker Mayfield, he's hurt. His freaking torn labrum. I talked about this before. I don't know what that means, dude. This isn't a sports podcast. But he tried to go out there. Doctor's like, no, dude, you can't, right? You guys are all beat up. Everybody go to the hospital, okay? Take a break. Take the day off. <clears throat> like, it's just bad. Everybody's freaking in the emergency room, right? Like, they're trying to warm up and practice for the game. We don't have enough players, so they got to go over, you know, to the freaking Cleveland Hospital, and they're running warm-ups with the nurses, like two-minute drills, like, go, 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 play horrible defense, horrible defense. She's, like, swatting out with a clipboard. I don't know what's going on over there, but we're in trouble. We're in trouble, and I'm, I'm nervous and I'm scared, but that's the spooky season, right? The spooky season is the spooky season for a reason, and that's... Because I'm terrified, and I don't like it. Like I said, right, this is this is part of the freaking emotional nutsack, right? This is the this is the pain, dude. This is like, ugh, twisting the freaking emotional nipples, dude. It's it's all emotional. I'm all sad all the time when it comes to that. But I still I still have hope. I still have hope, and I still have faith. And as soon as the game ends, I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, the season's over. Season's over. And about an hour later, I'm like, you know what? Forget it, dude. I'm back on my Browns game, and I'm getting hyped up. I'm Googling the stuff. I'm tweeting out the players like, you got it, buddy. Um, and hopefully that I give them some encouragement. I have no idea. Ooh. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I'm nervous. So you send a prayer, dude. Send a prayer. Uh, you know, help these guys out because it's, it's bad. I don't know if they need to have some more milk, like strengthen the bones or something. Or maybe you got to do more with the heat. I don't know. I don't know what it takes to be an athlete, dude. Again, this is a comedy podcast. I don't have any opinion when it comes to sports or at least an opinion that makes sense. Um, but anyways, that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. I just wanted to say that, you know, in the face of the horror of season, I'm scared, dude. I'm so scared. I just want the Browns to be good. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh oh! Please don't come back. <laughs> um. Anyways, what else is we gonna? Oh, dude, I finished Harry Potter. Uh, Expecto Patronum, dude. That series again. I don't want to spoil anything. I kind of came close, and I don't know if I did in the last one. But that series, dude. As someone who's never seen that ever, the series rocked on dude it was so cool again i was like oh superheroes wizards are for nerds wizards are for nerds but i freaking put on my spectacles i put on my nerdiest gear whatever that even means and i was fully invested and i wanted to be harry potter in fact i want to be harry potter and you go even further in fact i'm trying to be harry potter okay i was gonna try and get a harry potter costume for next week's episode, right? Next week is our little Halloween spoo special. And I was going to come in here dressed as Harry Potter. But the costume, the whole thing is $120. And even if I wanted to get it, I can't ship it in time. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. And if it has any ideas, if anybody has any sticks, like wands, or some spectacles, you have a striped tie, you have a robe, I don't know. Maybe I'll just be some, like, knockoff Walmart Harry Potter you know, I'll just wear my dad's robe and I'll get like a stick out of the woods. I'll just go, hmm, export our Patroner, you know, because I can't really use the words trademark, patent pending, and I want to get sued. But anyways, uh, I want to be Harry Potter, dude. It's so expensive. It's so expensive. And I'm not even worried about the money. It's just that I can't even get it in time. I should have prepared. I should have prepared. Um, but anyways, the series was killer dude and you still have time you're still in the spooky season it's still october if you want to go watch it go watch it for the first time and if you've already seen it go watch it again dude and uh it's really neat it's really really freaking cool and i don't it's so hard for me to talk about without saying anything else besides the spoilers don't say it, Tristan. Don't say it. okay <laughs> it was really neat it was a good series it was great um expect no patronum oh my gosh dude i want to freaking i might go watch it again and can maybe that'll freaking I don't know. I don't know. If anybody has a Harry Potter costume out there, you know, come tell me. I'll come get it, dude. I'll come get it, no matter how far you are. Um, what else, dude? What else? Uh, what else? How did? I, oh, dude, you want to here? Here's a little thing. I like I was getting sick, right? And I, after I got sick again from the wedding, I was I was on the downward trend. I was like, oh, come on, dude, come on. But, <clears throat> and here's the thing. Also, I probably could have been like healthier faster but i'm a horrible patient right there was like oh you gotta gargle of salt water get lots of food and fluids <laughs> and, and food if you want but take all your vitamins and do all the things get tons of rest and i'm like 
yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'll do it for like half a second, right? I'll, I'll sip the, the salt water, like, and then my mom will give me the vitamins, like, and then they're like, drink lots of fluid. I'm like, water's boring. And it's, uh, it's pretty tough. I'm a horrible patient. I don't do all the things. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm just gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take however long it's gonna take. I can't do anything. I can't live like this. Like, like, like the freaking Grinch. When he's just like feeding him, he's like, oh, what is that? Like, Here, try my new figgy pudding. I'll try my mom. Like, that's how I feel. <clears throat> There's like so many things you have to do, have to do if you want to get healthy. I just have no interest in it, dude. I have no interest in it. Um... Yeah, but anyways, I was just kind of letting it take its course, and the this I don't know if this is true or not, but the next day after this event that I'm about to tell you happened, I woke up feeling pretty good, you know? So I went to go work with my dad, and we were we were ripping out a kitchen, we were selling an island, and right before we leave, this uh, this big ginger kid comes in here, right? And I don't know if this is, I don't know if that's important to the story, but he was he was a ginger, okay? And... We're about to leave, and he walks in. He's like, "Hey, you guys like you guys like hot stuff? You guys like hot food?" And I'm like, "Okay, you like a hot Cheeto, like a Taki? Okay, yeah, I got like a little spicy things or something." And uh, and I follow him over there, and he opens the fridge. I'm like, "What's in the fridge? You don't put hot Cheetos in the fridge? What's he doing?" And he pulls out this little salsa, this little salsa thing. And I'm like, "Wow, this looks super orange. Is it just Frank's Red Hot? That's pretty spicy. Not really a snack. I don't know." And he's like, yeah, it's a, it's a hot salsa. It's my special recipe. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I don't know. That seems like it could be pretty hot. Don't know if I can handle that kind of spiciness. You know, I've, I've never tested myself in the face of all the spicy crap. But I walked in there and I'm like, okay, you know, I already accepted. I can't walk out, like follow this ginger kid into the kitchen and be like, yeah, I like spicy stuff. He's like, I made salsa. I'm like, whoa, you know, I was like, okay, I, I got to brave. I got to brave up, right? I got to freaking, yeah, bring it on, dude. And again, it's salsa. How bad could it be? He gives me a little spoonful. And I take it. And and I put it in my mouth. And immediately, I see him crack a smile. Why does he do that? Why does he crack a smile? I swallow that. I'm like, okay, you know, I've, I've seen all the videos, all the hot ones, all the stuff, right? With, with peppers, whatever, hot stuff, it takes time. I'm like, okay, it's going to take a minute. I'll be ready for it. I flip it onto my tongue. Boom. And there was no warm-up, dude. There was no warm-up. When the drops hit my tongue, it evaporated. My tongue dried out. Out of my ears, smoke, steam. Dude, my whole face went red. I was like, what the crap is this? And I was like, okay, pain. Pain management. I could take pain, all right? I got a high pain tolerance. I'm like, okay, take some pain. But my body is not used to having this kind of spice. I felt like my throat was about to close up. I was like... He's like, are you okay? I was like, he's like, what do you, what do you need? I was like, air, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> like, do you want some more? No, chips. No, air. And anyways, this stuff was hotter than the freaking color of his hair, red hot. I was like, oh my gosh. <sighs> he's like, yeah, it's pretty spicy, huh? I was like, yeah, no joke. He's like, I put Carolina Reapers in it. I'm like, what? Dude, Carolina Reapers, by the way, I believe is one of the hottest, if not the hottest pepper you can have. And it's not just a naturally occurring pepper, right? They braided these things together, scientifically modified, made up from the ground to be as hot as you could possibly handle. So I'm like, yeah, give me that. Ah! And I freaking, dude, everything in my body melted. Like this stuff was freaking hotter than the devil's bathwater. I was, I was like, I don't even know what to do. I can't even handle, like the pain wasn't even the worst part. It was just like, <gasps> it's like, oh, you know, I didn't know what to do. I never had anything like that. And he's like, here, have some water. Just, I'm trying to drink the water. Like, this isn't helping. And, uh, yeah, I almost beat him up. I almost, I was, I was, I was pretty mad for a second, but you know, he, to be fair, he asked me if I wanted some hot stuff and I stood right there in his face. And I said, yeah, bring it on like an idiot, dude. So now, you know, if anybody ever offers you some hot salsa, some hot crap, don't take it unless you can handle it. I had never had it before. Would I do it again? Probably because I'm dumb. But if you're smarter than I am, if you have an average level of intelligence, don't do it because it'll kill you. It is pretty bad. Like this, if it was anything hotter, I like, it, I really thought I was going to die. My whole life flashed before my eyes and I was like, crap, dude, I'm going to die with a cold. This sucks. Um, but anyways, uh, the next day, all right, after I was fuming, okay, and not just because I was angry, but because my body was literally in overdrive. Like I took a cold shower and it just, everything just evaporated on impact. Um, the next day, 
that stuff clears you out, okay? Phlegm, everything gone. Sinus, psh, drain. Woo! Everything melted out. And I was like, okay, dude, you know? I don't know what to say to that ginger kid, but I'm feeling a little bit better. So, you know, props to the salsa, props to the, you know. I don't know what the moral of the story is, but the pepper was hot. And I feel great, dude. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't know what the, I don't know what to say about that. Um, what else? What else has been going on, dude? What else is happening? I mean, we're at 24 minutes. That's just about all that we have in the system. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think we're going to end the freaking podcast. Uh, next week, though, next week, I do want to say I'm going to try and have a little spooky special. You know, I got some, I think right at the beginning of this uh, this show, right, when I first started making this these episodes, I talked about, um, I made a joke about child abductions, which wasn't funny. I mean, it was, but, but the only if you had a dark sense of humor. It's, but I was saying, like, I was making comedy out of a rooted from fear because I, and I teased up the story. I said, I was always afraid of being abducted my whole life. And I was trying to make a funny spin on a real life fear for me. And I have a story that might, I don't know if it's going to be dark or traumatizing. I don't know if that's even important. I don't even know if I should tell it. I have no idea. Well, I wasn't a kid. Okay, so don't worry about it. I was, whatever. I was pretty dark. But for the point of the spooky season, I don't know. I think it's fine. I've been waiting to tell it. It's been months since like March. So anyways, be here for that. Be here and see if what kind of costume I show up in. Maybe I'll have Harry Potter. I have no idea. Maybe I'll, I, I could just shave my head and try to be Voldemort. Right, I could get my hair long. Back to your chambers, Mr. Potter. I meant to do that. Dude, when I was sick, I could do a perfect Snape. Back to your chambers, Mr. Potter. And it was cool. But anyways, that's uh besides the, that's besides the point, dude. The point. Here's us. We're besides the point. Now, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> All right, uh, it's pretty warm. It's pretty hot. These are the layers. Thank you guys so much. I still haven't learned how to close the show. This is an ongoing theme, dude. For the next season, the next year an episode all of episodes of 2022 i'm gonna learn how to freaking close an episode that'll be my christmas gift to you i'm gonna figure out how to freaking do that but until then i'm gonna keep on rambling like what am i talking about right now like i said my brain can't catch up to say close it close it close i'm like ha, ah, you can't catch me i'm gonna keep on stuff all right whatever all right peace. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs>